Well, hello and welcome back to the 10 more and I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this video we're going to look at uh, riveting. Uh, not pop rivets as we're all used to and accustomed to putting in sheet metal, using whole sheet metal together. We're going to look at these brad rivets. Growing up on the farm here in the 50s and 60s, I used to watch my daddy and granddaddy uh, replace blades, uh, what they called a mowing machine. It was an old John Deere number four mowing machine. Uh, today they're called sickles, or the blades are called sickles. Uh, here's a quick picture of what I'm talking about replacing. They were riveted on a bar. There was a whole long series of these. I think the uh, probably a four or five foot section is what they would uh, uh, use in the old mowing machine they had on, here on the farm. And blades would get broke. Of course, eventually they would get dull and all of them would have to be replaced. And they would put them in with these brad rivets. And up there at my granddaddy's house, which again is only 100 yards up the road from me, but he had a, an old utility pole buried in the ground. Uh, to me, it always seemed too high, but to him, I guess it was the right height. And he had this piece of about an inch and a quarter thick by uh, four inch square. This was a torch cut uh, piece of metal. He always referred to that as his anvil. And him and daddy would lay the uh, old mowing machine blade up there and with a cold chisel cut those rivets out. There was no electricity even at the barn out there. Uh, even if there was, he didn't have an angle grinder. But they would use a chisel to cut them out. And then put them in and simply brad them down, uh, put them in from the, the bottom side, use a hammer and brad them down. Today I want to look at doing these brad rivets three different ways. Number one, we're going to put a rivet in, a piece of quarter inch metal, quarter inch uh, flat plate, and rivet it like, or brad it down like they did. Uh, just simply beat it down. We'll look at what it does to the head of the rivet, uh, and also where we set over here. Then what I want to do is come back to the bench, or come back to the, this side of the shop, and take this piece of drop. This is a piece of about two inch by one inch thick drop that I'll be honest, uh, I faced it off not only that, but I carried it to the surface grinder and ground the face, way overkill on that. Then this, what we'll do is put a, a small uh, recess in this as the, the head, to hold the head of the rivet. Then we'll take this and put a head or recess in it to use the brad down. This is all going to be done cold, uh, machining this. Uh, blacksmith would heat this up, take a, a ball end punch, and punch those in, forge those in. I'm going to use uh, ball end mills to do that. Why? Just because I got them and I want to see if it'll work. But after we get these pieces made, we're going to go back to this piece and we're going to put a rivet in and try riveting it with the rivet cold using our tools. Then I want to try one more thing. I want to put another rivet in this piece, heat it till it's red hot, and again, using our tools we're going to make in this video and rivet that down. Rule of thumb is the thickness of your, your material normally would be two or more pieces of material uh, just for simplicity's sake today. I'm using a simple one, or a single thickness. This is quarter inch stock. And rule of thumb is your rivet should be two and a half times the thickness of your, your stock, whether it's one piece, two piece, three, whatever. Should be two and a half times that. This is quarter inch, so two and a half times quarter is five eighths. That's what these rivets are. So let's go over to the anvil, and we're going to rivet one of these in cold without any bradding, uh, forming, 
and see what it does to the head and to the, uh, the set of the rivet. Okay, I hope you're not too disappointed. When I say we come to the anvil in here, uh, what I'm using for an anvil is a piece of railroad track uh, that I milled and surface ground the top to get flat. You know, they always have a little bit of a roll in them and did the edges as well. But we're gonna take our piece of material here, a rivet, and simply, uh, I'm going to put a, we're simply going to try cold riveting this down uh, without any heat or any forming tools. Once we get a little head formed on there, we'll turn it over and start pinning that down. All right, let's take a little closer look at what's happened here. First off to our head. Obviously we flattened the head down considerably. And on this side, we've got a good tight rivet, and it works, as I said, uh, probably hundreds, several hundred, if not thousands of rivets were put in this way by my daddy and granddaddy, and they held. I don't know that they ever lost a, lost a blade, but we're going to see if we can't make a little bit uh, better looking rivet sets than this. So let's go back over to the lathe and start making our rivet setting tools. The rivets I'm using are 7 seconds rivets, and the head is about 300 thousandths across, uh, which of course is a little bigger than a quarter inch and less than a three eighths. Uh, I don't have a ball end mill exactly that size, but what I'm gonna do this process with is start out with this quarter inch uh, spotting drill and just get a, a divot started in there. Then I'm gonna take this quarter inch ball in and pretty much bury it in there uh, just to the depth of the, of the ball. Compare it to my rivet head and then use a 3 8 ball end mill to keep working it down until this head fits in it like I think is a, prop, uh, is a proper fit. So let's start out with this quarter inch spotting drill. Now we're going to take the quarter inch ball end mill and that has put us a nice little uh, concave ball there. So now we'll go with the 3 8 Again, I'm just wanting to get that in there deep enough that this, this head comes flush. I think I'll extend the tail stock on that a little bit so I don't have to keep locking and unlocking it. Just a little more. And I was getting a little shatter with that headstock extended out, so I'm gonna tighten the location back up a little bit. Just a little more. taking just a few thousandths at a time because I just don't want it to get too deep. All right, I like that. Let me see if I can get this out where you can see what we've got. And hopefully you can see that's the lip on the head is flush with our set here. So what I'm gonna do is take this piece and do the same thing in the end of that. And by the way, there's not a reason in the world that you can't make these larger and put several different size divots in it, even on both sides. Uh, your setter 
course needs to be needs to match the head that you're going on one one per rivet size but your base here for the header side of it can be can have numerous divots in it so I'm going to do this out and then we'll meet back over at the anvil and we're going to try a cold set and a hot set okay we're back over here at the anvil now got our test piece of metal put a rivet in it and what I did was just look around in the scrap bin and find a couple pieces that would about match the height just to help hold it and again we're going to do this one cold so I'm going to use the uh, hammer just to set the rivet to begin with now we'll try our setting tool I think I may have just a little bit too much under that end. The head is starting to back up a little bit. Maintaining the integrity of our head. That has maintained the integrity of the head, but as you can see, it backed up just a little bit. And I think that was due to the fact that I had the other end raised up a little bit too high. Forming a fairly decent head there, but not quite what I expected. So let's, let's try heating one up. I'll get a rivet in and get it hot and then bring you right back. Well, folks, I'm going to call this one a failure. The head is perfect shape. But what have happened on the set over here, it started running to the side, if you will. I guess I should, probably should have set it with the hammer a little better to begin with. I'm going to let this piece cool off, and then I'm going to drill another test hole in this, and we're going to try another one hot and see if we can get any better results. All right, I got another piece of quarter inch thick test material here. I'm gonna set our rivet in there and I'm gonna get it hot, very hot. This is map gas I'm using, so, so it should get it a couple hundred degrees uh, hotter than just regular propane. But there is a lot of metal here to absorb that heat too, so it's going to leave that rivet pretty quick. Okay, folks, I'm going to call this one a failure, too. Let's go back to the workbench and recap what's going on here. Okay, before I entirely give up on this project, I'm going to try one more thing. Back originally, this cold set right here did a whole lot better than either one of the two hot sets. Both of them, I'm guessing the rivet was soft when I hit it and didn't hit it directly in the center, it leaned over, both of them. I don't know whether you can see it or not, but they're way off to the side, way off centered. So I'm going to try another cold now. 
The problem I had with the cold on the first one was that it just didn't seat tight. Don't know whether it slipped down a little bit before it set or exactly what happened, but got a good head and a good set on it. Yeah, I'm just going to hit it a couple times to to get it swole up just, just a little. Now let's try this. And again, just like before, I'm not even going to try to go any further. Just like before, the head has backed off. And it's not because this is too deep, because that is perfectly flush. What seems to be happening is that the workpiece is bouncing just a little. I know some of you are probably thinking by now, well, I'm leaving just too much material on this side over here. But everything I can research online through YouTube videos, everything says to leave one and a half times the diameter of the workpiece out here to brad over. So let's go back to the workbench now and talk about this and uh, see where we are. All right, folks, it's obvious there's a whole lot about setting rivets that I don't know. Uh, I hope some of you will leave some comments, some of you more experienced in setting rivets. Uh, give me some pointers on this. Uh, to recap right quickly, this first one right here was put in just cold, with no setting tools, just simply peened over with a ball peen hammer. The second one was put in cold using the setting tools that we made on the lathe. Third one, which was our first attempt at hot, the rivet laid over to the side. Second one with the hot rivet laid over to the side again. So my conclusion from this is if you've got a couple dozen uh, sickle blades to install, don't waste your time on a header and a setter or hot or cold or hot rivets. Simply get your ball peen hammer out and brad it over so that it stays. Again, if you got any pointers on what I'm doing wrong here, leave them in the comments. I would appreciate it because I would like for this to work. I hope you learned a little something from the video. I've learned a lot from it. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one.